Along with his mom, Gwen, Keith Waters from Amherstburg, Ontario, arrived for surgery at the DMC's Michigan Orthopedic Specialty Hospital. A physically active 18-year-old, Keith hurt his shoulder when he lifted a boat trailer onto a truck hitch. It just came dislocated and dropped, and then what it did, it was like, where your shoulder comes out, it like came in, and like, so pretty much my arm was dislocated. Was it painful? Uh, very. Passed out. Orthopedic surgeon Dr. Stephen Lemos is a vice chair at the hospital and a team physician for the Detroit Tigers. He says with a shoulder dislocation in a young guy like Keith, the odds of it happening again are great. What happens is um, in a younger age group, uh, anywhere between 15 and uh, 25, the, the risk of re-dislocation after a primary dislocation is around 85% with after conservative management. So if you just, if you put the arm in a sling. And then was it ever dislocated again after yeah, that? Yeah, it comes dislocated like all the time. I sleep with my hands over my head and then like I wake up and it's just dislocated. Dr. Lemos explained why this keeps happening. As you can see here, the cup of a shoulder is really quite shallow. And to double the depth of the socket, there's actually a bushing that surrounds the shoulder, it's called the labrum. And that is attached here. And the labrum's kind of like made out of gristle, it's similar to a meniscus in the knee. And what happens is when the shoulder goes this way, it tears on the rim, and what happens is it doesn't heal. And so what happens is the shoulder keeps coming out. To repair the tear in the labrum, also known as a Bankart lesion, Dr. Lemos advised Keith to have minimally invasive arthroscopic surgery. Traditional open surgery employs a much larger incision and results in considerable trauma to the muscles and tissue covering the shoulder. Recovery can be long and painful. By contrast, the arthroscopic procedure involves just three tiny incisions. Keith goes home the day of the procedure. The recovery, they're six weeks in a sling, and at three months, they're usually back with full range of motion and uh, are able to uh, participate in most things. While Keith is being prepped, a catheter is inserted close to the nerve in the shoulder. It will deliver medication to ease pain from the surgery. It's fairly cutting edge. Not just the arthroscopic repair itself, but also for pain medicine. That helps the patient, number one, go home, but that also helps them use far fewer uh, narcotic medications. Before surgery, Dr. Lemos showed me Keith's x-ray. Okay, well, as you look here, the shoulder is a ball and socket joint. Here's the ball and here's the socket. Right. And the socket's very shallow in the shoulder, unlike a hip, which is more of a cup shape. This is like more like a saucer or a plate. And therefore, the shoulder really requires uh, other things to provide stability, such as the muscles and soft tissue. And the soft tissue is one thing we talked about was the labrum. Mm -hmm. And the labrum is a bushing which doubles the depth, so it's about out to here. Oh. And that gets torn off when the shoulder dislocates. So the labrum doesn't really show up on this. Exactly, because it? it's soft tissue. In the operating room, Dr. Lemos made his tiny incisions and inserted the arthroscope, a thin rod with a tiny video camera on the end of it. With the picture it provides, he takes a good look at the shoulder joint and confirms his surgical plan. And there is the defect. This is the cup, yep. and that's the labrum. Okay? Wow. And oh, that is... Big gap. Exactly. To reposition and secure the labrum, the doctor first drills holes in adjacent bone and places anchors in the bone. You're drilling into the into, into the, the and through the articular cartilage, just the edge of it, and then into the bone. Then, using specialized instruments, the doctor sutures the labrum to the anchors, sewing it firmly into place. If I just pull on these two, you yeah. can see it shifted up. Yeah. yeah. See that? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. going to pull it right on top. But now wow. I'm going to take the other one and do the same thing. How can many I, of these anchors do you three. have to put in? Once the doctor has knotted each of the sutures in place to secure the labrum, he clips them above the knot. Just wow. like that. Finally, Dr. Lemos moves Keith's arm to make sure the shoulder will have a full range of motion. And so, it's over. A couple of sutures in those tiny incisions that Dr. Lemos made in his shoulder. He'll be in a sling for about six weeks, and then three months from now, Keith should be back to uh, normal activities. Actually, when we caught up with him about a month later, Keith was well ahead of schedule. 
He was out of the sling two weeks early and was already into serious rehab. I suppose being in a sling for uh, six weeks, I could like easily move my arm by four. Except when overdoing his workouts, he reported being pain free. Definitely come back for sure if I ever break a bone or anything like that again, which will probably happen. Visit us here at dmc.org to learn more about minimally invasive arthroscopic shoulder surgery or to make an appointment with Dr. Stephen Lemos and his fine team at DMC's Michigan Orthopedic Specialty Hospital. The DMC, we just think it's a better way to get better. I'm Emory King.